All right, guys, welcome back. In this video, I just want to go over the force method and talk about how it works and how we can use it to solve statically indeterminate problems. So for this discussion, we've got three little situations here. We've got a statically determinate beam with two loads. We've pretty much got that same beam here, except we've added on one extra reaction. So basically, this is one redundant reaction, uh, and that makes this system one degree statically indeterminate. And then we've got this other beam over here where we've got two redundant reactions. Basically, this system or this structure is two degrees statically indeterminate. And we can use the force method to solve this if we want. Now, I'm not entirely convinced that the force method is truly its own method because basically it's just always a combination of using the method of superposition plus some other method that you want to use. And you'll see that when it comes to these statically indeterminate problems, that's all it is. So it's really, it's just kind of combining two other things and, and treating extra reactions as redundant. But we'll get to that in a second. So if you guys remember um, when we talked about the method of superposition, if we wanted to find the deflection here at point B for this statically determinate beam, uh, then basically this principle of superposition just states that the actual deflection here at B is just the sum of the deflection caused by the system with only the point load plus this deflection of the system with only the distributed load. And you can find these individual deflections for YB1 and YB2 using whatever method you choose. Like you could use the moment area method, you could use tables, um, you could also use the, the double integration method to find the deflection here. There's lots of other tools available to you, but basically you find those individual deflections and then you add them together using the principle of superposition then you get this actual deflection. So that, that's basically like using superposition plus another method for a statically determinate problem. And it basically works exactly the same way with an indeterminate problem. So when we look at this next example, this is a statically indeterminate problem, but we can pretty much do exactly the same thing because we know that this reaction here, um, basically YB, is just going to be a vertical point load that we can call BY. And we don't know what by is it's an unknown but basically we have the same situation here is we know that the deflection of this loaded structure is going to come down something like that and then end up here at zero so what we can do is we can use the principle of superposition to to say that this actual deflection is the sum of this structure with the applied loads plus just the beam with the reaction and as long as these two add up to zero, then we'll actually be getting this zero deflection that we would be expecting at a reaction. So we can just write that zero is equal to YB1 plus YB2. And now all you have to do is just find out the deflection caused by the sum of these two forces. And you can either split that in these two situations like this, or these two systems, or you could keep them together and use one of the methods available to you, like the moment area method or double integration, or yeah, if you're using tables, then split it into these. Um, but basically, this will be a known value for you, and uh, but you know that you have to add this to an unknown value, and you could use the, maybe the table deflection or the table value for a point load at the end of a cantilever beam to get an expression that's in terms of the magnitude of by and the uh, length. And basically the only unknown that you're going to get in this expression is going to be the magnitude itself. And then you'll find out that it's actually really easy to just sum those up and then you can just really quickly solve for by. So when we, when we remove a reaction like this from this first situation and then add it in in a second situation uh, using the method of superposition, we call that basically removing a redundant reaction. And the reason it's redundant is because it is the reaction that's basically putting this over and above being able to solve it with just statics equations alone. So if there's only one reaction that makes it that way, then this problem has one redundant reaction and it's one degree statically indeterminate. In this problem, um, this has two, this is two degrees statically indeterminate because if you counted up all the reactions, we have one, two, three, four, five, and we only have three equations of static equilibrium. So we have two redundant reactions. So basically we do the exact same principle here as we pull these out and just draw the system without the redundant reactions. And then we draw the system again, each time applying only one of the support reactions. So first we just apply BY, and then we're going to get this deflection at point B that's due to this case two where we only have BY being applied. And then we also get the deflection that's happening at C, but just due to the, the situation here where we're only applying a point load basically halfway along at BY. So then we do the same thing for the redundant reaction at C. And we're going to get some deflected structure here with, uh, with a certain deflection at point B and a certain deflection at point C due to the point load only being applied at point C. So if we think about the deflected structure of the original, you know, like actual system, it's going to look something 
I'm not too sure, but it's gonna come down something like that, probably come down again, something more or less like that. Um, but basically the deflection at the reactions is all going to be zero. So the deflection, most importantly, at point B is going to be zero, and the deflection at point C is going to be zero. So that means that if we add, the, using the principle of superposition, if we add this deflection, which goes downward, plus this deflection, which is upward, plus this deflection, which is upward, that has to be equal to zero. Or basically this downward deflection is the sum of this upward deflection and this upward deflection. Same with this one, this downward deflection here is upward to is equal to this upward deflection plus this upward deflection. So we write that like this. And we're basically going to get a system of equations where we have two equations and two unknowns. And these terms in here are not the unknowns. These will actually be expressions. Um, and the, the unknowns that will be in these terms is going to be by and cy, basically the magnitudes of these forces. Um, these expressions that you'll get, uh, again, that comes from using the other th the other half of the force method is basically when we apply another method that we know. So you'll get these expressions, uh, these deflections at certain x locations in terms of your applied loads um, from, say, the moment area theorem or from tables perhaps or from the double integration method. Um, but basically, the, the unknowns, once we, and we'll actually do this exact example with some real numbers, um, but these unknowns are by and cy, two unknowns, two equations, and you'll be able to solve for those. And then from there, you can basically, once you know those, then you can solve for the reactions at A, and then you'll draw the shear force diagram, bending moment diagram, and all that sort of stuff. So that's just kind of a quick intro to how this works. It's, we're always using superposition, and then we're always doing something else in addition to that. So join me in the next video, and we're actually going to basically do this example here in the middle that's one degree statically indeterminate. We'll put some numbers to this, and we'll figure out what the reactions are. And then in the video after that, uh, we will attempt a, a slightly more difficult version of what's going to be two degrees statically indeterminate. And again, we'll put some numbers to this, and we'll solve this entire problem using the force method.